personal trainer and nutrition specialist. This episode is Get Fit to Travel. So many people wait till they're retired to travel and by that time they may not have the health that they need to travel. They may not have the stamina, the functional mobility, or the ability to travel. So we're going to talk about some exercises you can do later, but for now we're going to take it to the kitchen. And my next trip, which has been my bucket trip, trip is a trip to Ireland and we are going in May to Ireland so today because it's March I'm gonna make cottage pie I'm not gonna make shepherd's pie because I'm not using lamb did you know that shepherd's pie is called shepherd's pie when you use lamb and if you're using some other meat like beef or in our case today ground turkey it's called cottage pie just a helpful holly hint today okay so we are gonna start with we have two pounds of ground turkey and instead of mashed potatoes in this cottage pie I'm gonna make it healthier by using mashed cauliflower so I started I steamed the cauliflower and I pureed it already so that I could save some time today so what we're gonna start with is um, two pounds of ground turkey one medium onion that I already chopped and so we're going to put this in here and we're going to let this start to cook. So by the way, this was two um, cauliflowers, heads chopped, steamed, and then I put it in the, um, in the blender or the food processor. But um, a friend of mine, Ellen, who you've seen on the show before, she told me that Trader Joe's has frozen mashed cauliflower that is really good. So that's an uh, option as well. Okay, so as that's heating up, I'm also going to warm this up again because uh, I made this earlier. And we're going to add some cream cheese and a little butter to it to make it a little more tasty. So this is my mashed cauliflower. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit is um, I have some clients, and I had one client who was going on a trip to California. He just got back, by the way. And um, they hired me to help him uh, get a little stronger. He's 80 years old. And he was having challenges sitting and standing and walking with balance issues. And so I've been working with him since October. And he, one of the things that I have him do is I have him walk up and down the stairs four times consecutively twice a day to help build up his cardiovascular endurance and his stamina. His wife was worried that they would have to use a wheelchair for him get going from one gate to the other. But that wasn't the case. He was so proud of himself, he was able to walk from one, one end of the airport to the other. Another thing was um, they went to a tennis match. And so he was really worried because he had to walk up into the stands and there's no railing. And then he had to sit down on the bleachers and he had to be able to get up without using his hands. So we did chair squats, chair tap squats. And so we did 15 of those and he had to do that every day. We also do 25 push-ups. We started on the counter, we moved down to the chair, then we're on the stair now and we move down one stair. So as you go lower down with those push-ups, it adds um, another degree of difficulty. While this cooks, I'm going to throw a little bit of salt in here. I like the kind that you, oops, look at that, that you grind as you do it. There we go. And we'll throw a little pepper in there. Same freshly ground pepper. Gotta love that. I also love cooking with color, so we're going to use peas and corn 
for our vegetables. Um, we're going to add some basil, oregano, and a little cayenne pepper to give it a little bite. So some things that you also need to think about um, when you're traveling to get ready for a trip um, is stairs are a big component. So um, if you aren't able to do stairs, you really need to practice doing stairs. The other thing that you need to worry about if you're traveling for a long period of time on the plane, you really need to do some exercises on the plane. And I'll show you some of them. I call them jet exercising um, when we go to the exercise segment of the show so that you don't develop blood clots. My friend Ellen did a three-week trip. She went to Thailand, Vietnam, uh, Dubai. She, she hit a bunch of places. Problem was, on the way back in the airplane, she didn't get up and move around. She did do some like ankle circles and, and um, leg knee lifts and stuff, but she didn't get up and move around. And when she got home, she started feeling a little pain, like a tug in her leg. She ended up going to the hospital, and she had a blood clot. So it's very important to keep moving around when you're in the plane. Get up, walk around, do some exercises that I'm going to show you later on so you don't um, run into trouble with blood clots. So we're just trying to make it a little healthier by using mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. I know that I usually will make a shepherd's pie or a cottage pie when I have a lot of leftover mashed potatoes. And my kids love it then. Um, but we've really been doing a lot more mashed cauliflower lately. And in this recipe of mashed cauliflower, I'm going to add some cream cheese and some butter. Sometimes at home, I don't always add the cream cheese. This recipe calls for cream cheese. But sometimes at home, I will add uh, half a cup of Parmesan cheese to it. And that just gives it a little bit more flavoring. Because you know cauliflower can be a little boring if you just leave it to its own devices. Now, of course, if you have to keep it non-dairy, then you don't want to use cream cheese or cheese, for that matter, or butter, for that matter. But in this case, we don't have that issue. So we're adding it to make it just a little bit creamier, just a little bit more tastier. And I have this handy-dandy little mini spatula that I love so much here. Really need to get one at home. I am going to, let's see, put the veggies in with the meat. So we're going to do that. And it calls for an egg. So let me just break up this egg. Put that in there. Once I get that mixed a little bit, then I'll add in the rest of the the um, spices. Woo! This is getting big. Now, everybody has a different recipe. You can use different um, vegetables. Some people just use a bag of mixed vegetables. I like using corn, a little bit of corn, definitely peas for that green since it is an Irish dish. Got to stick with some green in there. Here we go. All right. So now this is a teaspoon of basil. This is a teaspoon of oregano. And then to add a little bit of spice to it, we have a little cayenne pepper. All right, let's mix that up. Aha, the cauliflower is heating up nicely. Everything's pulling together here. Look at how colorful it is. I'm all about color, ladies and gentlemen all about color in the food to make it a little more interesting and definitely tasty. Including color in our pans. Okay, so we're going to let that cook for a minute. We're going to stir up our cauliflower. Looking good. Looking good. Oh yeah, that cream cheese definitely makes it nice, thick, and creamy. And we're 
And then we're going to put some butter in there. Yeah, that's not as healthy, but it's going to taste good. This recipe will be up on my website um, tomorrow. And the show will go live on Acton TV next week. I'll also send out an email with the, with the schedule of the show. That'll go out on Tuesday next week, so you'll get to see it. Here we go. Yes, this is looking great. This looks good. Definitely looks good. I'm going to pour some of this in. Let me turn this cauliflower down. There we go. Pour this in the bottom. Make sure we get everything in there. My husband likes the onions a little bigger, so I c cut them a little bit bigger. Here we go. This is looking good. Oops, keep it away from the little handles. All right, and now the cauliflower goes on top, and then we're going to stick it in the oven for 30 minutes. And this is our cottage pie for St. Patrick's Day. And here we are back again. I just took this cottage pie out of the oven. Remember again, it's not a shepherd's pie because I didn't use lamb meat. I used grilled, or I used ground turkey meat instead. Um, I added a little bit of the shredded cheddar cheese on top and melted it for another five minutes and here it is. Doesn't that look awesome? And let's put it in a little container, a little thing here. Oh yeah. There we go. Very colorful. Looks very tasty. Uh, I could try it. It looks very hot. I'm hoping not to burn myself. Mmm. Wow. That cauliflower really tastes good. It's very creamy. It's a great addition to it. And so, that's what we have in our cooking segment today. This is our cottage pie. Uh, for St. Patrick's Day and we're going to take it over to the other end of the studio and I'll go over some exercises that you can do to get you fit for your trip. We're at the get fit for your trip section and like I said earlier most people plan to do some traveling when they retire. Unfortunately many of them are not in good health to travel and they may not have the stamina, the functional movement, mobility, or strength that they're going to need to do some of these sightseeing tours. So going into your trip fit gives you the ability to enjoy a wider variety of vacation activities. It's a lower risk of injury as well as soreness. You don't want to be sore on vacation. You have higher energy for exploring and doing engaging in your destination. You have more adventurous memories. You have a greater ability to go to places that you want to go to. You have more freedom to say yes to some of those external excursions, those, those other sightseeing opportunities that may involve hiking or maybe climbing up stairs in the turret of a castle. So we want to get you there. Um, and you want to start working out at least eight weeks prior to your trip. If you don't work out all year round, which of course I suggest, eight to 12 weeks. So let's start with stairs. There are going to be stairs everywhere, and some of them are not going to have railings. And you're going to be walking up stairs that are uneven surfaces, like maybe in a castle, or high. you need to get up on high steps getting into the tour buses. So you want to practice going up and down stairs at home, like I had with my other client. He had went up and down the stairs four times in a row, twice a day, and that really made a difference. So Hold on if you need to, but try to get to a point where you can do the stairs without holding on. Another thing, you need to be able to sit and stand without help. Heck, some of those toilets are really low in other parts of the country. And there are places where there aren't even toilets to sit on, you just squat. So you need to have some strength in your legs in order to do that. So these are a couple things that I recommend. 
I recommend you can do wall sits and with a wall behind you just come down and leaning on that wall and hold it for as long as you can and come back up. Another thing that you can do, which I practice with my client, are squat taps on the chair. You just come down, tap it, and come back up. Come down, tap it, and come back up. So you want to do these at least 15 to 20 times. Now, you may need to work up to it, um, but that's okay. Other things that you might have to do are duck unders and step overs. Sometimes you may be going through um, an underpass and you have to duck underneath or you may be in a cave and you're ducking underneath whether it's in nature or in cities you have these needs so one of the things you can do is practice leaning down into a squat and walking sideways while you're hunched over so that you can get underneath different areas get down into a wide squat and walk so that you're hunching over or if you need to step over things then I'm using these hurdles. When you step over, try not to lift with your knee, but try to lift with your hip. Put your finger right here on your hip flexor and feel that as you lift the leg. When you lift with your hip, you can lift your leg that much higher. Going over curbs, stepping up into the bus. Um, again, don't lift with your knee. When you lift with your knee, it lifts about this high. When you lift with your hip, look how much higher it goes. And you can go over these hurdles, or in that case, there may be other obstacles, or high stairs. I'll tell you, some of those stairs in Europe are very steep. So you want to practice going over objects by lifting from your hip and not your knees. Another thing is you may have to sprint to get to your gate. You may be having a transfer from one gate to another and the time is really tight. You should practice little jog intervals running fast so that you know that you can do that. Sometimes you need to run for the bus, sometimes you need to run for the train, sometimes you need to run for the plane. You know, it, it, it is a necessity so try to build up your stamina and your ability to do that. Okay, luggage. Picking up your luggage and putting it in the overhead bin. So the exercise that I use with my clients, especially my seniors, is we do the wood chop, where you're picking up your luggage, you're twisting and putting it in the overhead bin. Remember, the aisle in that plane is very narrow, so you, you don't have a lot of room. So you have to pick up from one end, lift, twist, and put it in. So practice that with either a weight or um, a kettlebell, heck, practice it with a suitcase full of stuff so that you can do that. The other thing is you may have to pick up that luggage and carry it. I know everybody has wheels on their luggage now, but some of those roads, those cobblestone roads, are very uneven in Europe. And if you're going from the bus to your hotel or the taxi to the hotel and you're trying to pull it, you're going to end up having to lift it and carry it. So practice doing that carrying your luggage or carrying weights across the room. Pick it up from one area, walk across the room, and put it down. Pick it up from that area, walk across the room, and put it down. It's going to help you. The other thing is balance. So I've heard from plenty of clients when they come back from trips that the um, sidewalks are unstable, that the roads are unstable, and so they need to work on the balance. So what you can do is tandem standing. I know we did this in our brains and balance class. One foot in front of the other, heel to toe, shoulders up, back and down. Tighten your core so that you can balance. Hold for 10 to 15 seconds on one foot and then switch 10 to 15 seconds on the other. Remember, tighten your core, shoulders up, back and down. Um, if you increase your core strength, you're going to be able to balance a lot, even, a lot better. So you can also do tandem walking, shoulders up, back and down, tighten your core, heel to toe. Try not to look straight down because your head is heavy and if you look down, your head will take you over. Definitely do not walk with your hands behind your back because when you do that, if you trip and fall, it's too, you don't have time to get your hands out from behind you. It also pushes you over. So that, you don't want to walk like that. 
Um, what you might need to do, though, is go over unstable surfaces. So let me take you over here where I have a little mini obstacle course set up. So again, any time that you're going to go over unstable surfaces, shoulders up, back, and down, tighten your core. You always want to step in the middle of the unstable surface. So here I'll step here. This is a bigger one surface, so I can put two feet on. Otherwise, you always step in the middle of the unbalanced surface. So maybe you're going across a stream, and there's rocks that you're going to go across. Make sure you step in the middle of those rocks. The middle of your foot, in the middle of the balance device, or whatever that object is that you're stepping on. That's my helpful Holly hint. OK. So working on your core strength, you can do standing abs. Push that belly button back towards your spine, and then release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Those are standing abs. I suggest you do 30 of those. You can also sit in the chair and put your hands under your legs and lift those knees. This is working your lower abs. Try not to lean. Don't rock back and forth. All right. The other one is come to the edge of your chair. Cross those arms over your chest because you don't want to be using your arms. And lean back, tap the back of the chair, and then come forward. These are called lean backs. Works those lower abs. You can do it sitting in the chair. OK? Um, you also want to stretch. Because after a day of walking around and climbing and doing things that you're not used to doing, you want to do a stretch, whether you do it lying on your mat, your bed, or just standing, nice arms up, takes a nice deep breath. <sighs> a lot of times that you're also going to get a little sore from the different mattresses. So either it's the activity that might make you a little sore or the different mattresses. It's always great to stretch. When you're on the bed, you could do a lumbar roll where your legs go from one side to the other. Sitting in the chair or even in the bus, the tour bus, take a nice deep breath. We'll do a yoga twist. Deep breath in. Twist, grab the back of the chair, and exhale. Come on back center, take a deep breath in. Twist, grab the back of the chair, and exhale. So that's a great stretch. Another one, hamstring stretch. In the chair, just put those legs straight, arms up, take a deep breath. Come on down, reach for your toes, and grab where you can. This is going to get from the, the buttocks all the way down. So when you're sitting a lot, it really does tighten your hamstrings. If you're on those buses for a long time, it's always good to do a stretch. This is also a great stretch to do in the air, airplane. OK. <clears throat> so exercises that you can do in the airplane to help reduce um, a DBT, which is a, a blood clot. So you can do ankle circles while you're sitting in the chair. Circle one way, 10 or 15. Circle the other way, 10 or 15 times. Foot pumps so that you do first your, the balls of your feet, lift set of 10 to 15, then the heels. Then make it more challenging and lift the ball of one foot, the heel of the other, and switch, switch, switch. This one's not so easy. It's good for the brain as well as it is for the feet, OK? Then make sure that you bend over, reach down, come on up, do some neck rolls, roll to one side, hold it for five seconds, roll to the other side, hold it for five seconds, never roll around the back because your neck is not built to go that way. Shoulder rolls, get those shoulders rolling forward, forward and backwards. Do that overhead stretch. Yeah, you want to maybe make sure you don't uh, hit your neighbor, <laughs> that overhead stretch. And the key is, the real big thing is to make sure you get up and walk around the aisle. Um, walk through the aisle. When you go up and you're waiting for the toilet, do some calf raises. Not a bad thing. I sometimes just get up there and, and hang out doing calf raises, doing marching in place, just so that I can keep my um, blood flowing. And that's what you want to do, especially on those long flights. 
OK. If you do, here's some of the symptoms for a blood clot or a DVT, just so you know. You may feel a cramp in your calf or a pulling sensation. Um, usually, it's from the calf down. If you can see the skin, it may be shiny and red. It could be warm to touch. If that's the case, you want to seek medical help immediately. Don't wait. If you're away somewhere and you start feeling that, like if you just got to Thailand and you're feeling that, you need to seek a, a medical help immediately because a blood clot could be very dangerous. On my website, I have a blog called Jettercise, and that has all the exercises that I just went over that you could do on the plane. So you can find that on my website, fittingfitnessin.com. You can also find the, what, the uh, recipe that I did today for the cottage pie, not the shepherd's pie, but the cottage pie on my website, fittingfitnessin.com. Under the Get Healthy with Holly Show tab, you'll find that information on there. Um, if you need more information on exercises for your trip, I, can do, I do online training, so just take a look. Look for me on fittingfitnessin.com. And I'd just like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, in the kitchen, thank you for joining me in the exercise component. And I look forward to seeing you next time on Get Healthy with Holly.